Welcome, everybody, to this exciting event with Bob Mann. Um, my name is Vladimir Jerasek. I'm the director of uh, events at Cloud Security Alliance UK chapter. Before we go into this session with Bob, uh, I would like to spend two minutes uh, showing you what Cloud Security Alliance is uh, and potentially isn't. Uh, in a sense, uh, the Cloud Security Alliance is a non-profit organization uh, worldwide producing uh, research uh, around cloud security and cloud computing, organizing members, sharing knowledge uh, with the objective of making cloud computing and cloud security uh, knowledge worldwide available to everybody. Uh, over years, uh, the most notable research that um, CSA created is a security guidance, uh, which is essentially a Bible, uh, what cloud computing is and isn't. And then, for example, CCM, Cloud Control Matrix, which is used by enterprises uh, to assess their cloud providers. More research is being done, and uh, we would welcome you to come on board and uh, help us. The UK chapter is uh, well organized with a large base uh, of members. We organize events, uh, research, and the board, uh, which is all non-profit and uh, staffed with volunteers like myself, uh, are professional in cybersecurity, cloud uh, entrepreneurs driving the UK chapter forward. The events that we organized uh, last year uh, were plenty. I just wanted to highlight a few very successful ones, such as uh, challenges in cloud security and transformations with Dimitri, a really good, exciting chat uh, discussion with Bob Roger. No slides. Really good to, to watch and listen. Uh, if you want to jump into a job in cybersecurity and cloud, uh, watch our CSA Cyber versus recru Recruiter uh, session. And finally, we try to demystify the STAR um, uh, registry for cloud vendors and how it compares to other compliance frameworks with Daniele Katedu, uh, EMEA CTO of CSA. Uh, we plan exciting events going forward, uh, such as lighting talks that obviously you are tuned into right now, uh, ideally every two weeks, uh, <coughs> with uh, great presenters uh, such as today. Uh, in December, we plan uh, a panel on predictions for 2021. Uh, and in February, some great event panel workshop uh, format to be decided. But I would like to make it more engaging, not just presenting, but actually people discussing what kind of research and new trends uh, the CSA UK should be helping uh, in driving forward. We always uh, welcome you to uh, come and speak, such as Bob Mann today and a few other speakers uh, going forward. So please uh, send us a you know talk proposal. Uh, you, you can see the link on the right hand side, or indeed email me uh, directly. Thank you, and uh, now we can jump into the event with Bob. Okay, uh, thanks very much, uh, Vlad. So um, we have some slides coming up and Vlad's gonna run those for me. Um, maybe a quick bio from myself. Uh, so I'm uh, Bob Mann, I'm based uh, here in the UK. Um, I'm in charge of my own small company. I'm probably coming to the twilight years of my security career, um, which began many, many years ago, uh, having spent uh, just over 26 years in the Royal Air Force, mostly in the, uh, the police and security services type work. Um, part of that role was quite physical, um, part of it um, more to ac academic. So I used to be a really fit guy and I used to test uh, security installations uh, for a living for a couple of years. Um, I conducted surveys of both civilian and military installations to do with sort of counter-terrorism, uh, counter-espionage, counter-sabotage, those sort of things. Um, and I think the benefits I gained from that uh, that work, I, I've learned quite a, a lot to learn about uh, how today's uh, security controls are, are used. Um, 
And I think I can bring the sort of threats and the risks and the consequences of um, intrusions and uh, the failure to look at things properly um, from a computer security uh, perspective. Um, and so um, Vladimir just wanted me to mention a couple of, uh, he thinks are interesting stories. Um, part of the testing we did, my team and I, um, were to play a battlefield intrusion into installations. And uh, one of the things we did was, uh, was set was to steal a tank. Um, if I get chance at the end of the seminar here, then maybe I can go over that. Um, but I'm quite proud that uh, from a record perspective, um, my one of my colleagues and I, uh, we cleared a from standing start to standing start, two times 2.8 meter fences um, in just over seven seconds. So I think our prowess was well known because we tested and we checked and we uh, um, tested and tested and tested and we got really quite good at that sort of thing. Now I'm, um, let's say, several kilos heavier um, and I'm sort of moving into uh, the, the more uh, sedate elements of, of computer security. Um, but I wanted to say that things that will come up in my, in my presentation will be things I learned in my career in the military, and that was uh, leadership, um, clear vision, uh, teamwork, and, and delegation um, to trusted um, people who I knew I, who were capable and who were experienced. And then leaving the military, um, then I held several positions as the CISOs or CSOs in, in quite major companies. And I've used all that experience uh, to help me see through some of the obstacles that organizations undertake. So without further ado, let me ask Vlad to, uh, to put me off screen and I can then talk through uh, the slide deck. Thank you, Bob. Off to you. Um, can you just, just go back to the original slide? Slide one, Vlad, if I could. Be, is that pain? Okay. So, um, okay, yeah. So, no time to stand and stare um, and watching the clouds pass by. So, I just want to take you on a short journey that during my CISO experience, I had daily encounters with various teams with an organization, primarily IT. And this is not about IT bashing. It's just about my interpretation of why mistakes were made and how they were made when moving from on-premise to cloud computing. Um, so hopefully some of this may resonate with many of you um, and that it might provide some insight for those who haven't with something uh, to work with or from um, when you're engaged or, or leading cloud computing. Um, so let me go to the next slide, please, Vlad. So the poem by William Henry Davis is an old favorite of mine. Much can be read into what he says, but his primary message is that, you know, we are always in such a hurry that we will miss things. We'll overlook things. Um, we will not consider the consequences of our actions. And by and large, we'll be much the poorer for it. So, you know, the key message is about um, we have no time to stand and stare, which can be read in several ways, that the technology will march on and faster than we can actually keep up with. But that's one of the issues I, I, I have with cloud computing services, um, which we'll go into later on, in that there's this race between trying to keep up and but not being capable of being able to do so. Um, so... If we take this into cloud and cloud services, it means we, we will fail to understand those key elements. And that might be our undoing as technology advances. Uh, not everyone can keep up and perhaps uh, we want to keep up. Um, okay, is this next slide please, Vlad? So I'm just gonna go through some of the, the key musings, my observations and my anecdotes. And I think Vladimir will be available to uh, answer questions. Um, I've just had a message here saying audio is bad. So is that audio from me? It is from Francesco. Hopefully audio is fine. Um, then I'll go through recommendations and then we can have a Q&A session if, if that's uh, what you would like to do. 
Okay, so um, might be old hat for you, but some of you guys on the call will be really very, very technical, been involved in cloud for quite some time, but some of us aren't. Um, and I, I'm a sort of a semi-technical guy, so I understand when you brief me, but I don't really fully understand all the technical stuff when, when people have that brief. Um, so, so thanks, Vlad. Um, so I want to put, provide some context to the things that I've looked at. Um, but first of all, there are so many interpretations of what the cloud really means. Uh, for me, it's just a metaphor for processing and the management of information located in thousands of data centers um, and their associated services somewhere else. And, and that's how I remember it, just a whole bunch of data centers somewhere on the globe. Uh, so the issue I have, or one of the issues, is that the image of the cloud is really just a, it's, it's the image itself. Is that it's soft, it's fluffy, it's fuzzy, it's nice. But I have my sort of wrist antenna twitching to say that I see potential threats, potential impacts, and potential consequences with using cloud. But if you take the right approach, then it will be fine. So then there's that the cabal of key players who run, they, they sort of own the cloud infrastructure. And sometimes it's not always easy to understand who owns your data. So do we really have any idea of what, where, when, and how our data is processed because the cloud technology is owned and managed by others? Then there's the nation states that can legitimately access any and all of your data without telling you. So they, they are given the data by the infrastructure people, the big owners, the cabal I mentioned. Um, and they don't have to tell you. So you never know whether your information is going to be uh, legitimately accessed or, as we know, uh, not all governments play by the, the, the right rules and, and stretch them. So there's potential to get hold of your data, which isn't quite or strictly um, legal. And I just wonder how many organizations actually encrypt the data uh, in the cloud. Um, OK. so. Uh, the next slide, please, Vlad. So it's never easy because the, the cloud is so complex. Um, it reminds me that the IT used to be regarded as a black art. And then when more people became IT literate, it was all unraveling pretty nicely. And now I just think that, that the cloud has made the black art of IT in a different form. Um, I'm, I'm not sure there's an, adequ an adequate understanding of the accountability and responsibility and ownership of the cloud and, and who's, who can be held to account when it all goes wrong. It does appear that it can reduce complexity, but in some circumstances, out of sight and out of mind can be dangerous from an IT team perspective. One of the things I, I've seen, and I'll go through some explanations in my, my debate here, is that um, teamwork in the military, as I've mentioned, it is the same in the sort of civilian life, in the commercial world, the financial world, the retail market. It's absolutely key to any successful mission, any successful objective you have. Um, and it would certainly help teams understand the intricacy and complexity of cloud computing. But I see pitfalls of certainly over the last 10 years as we sort of morphed away from on-premise IT to the cloud. So often in my position um, as the security uh, professional of an organization, sometimes uh, in thousands and sometimes just a small um, team of say five or six people, I see a distinct lack of teamwork and organization and this is one of the pitfalls i don't see a joined up any joined up writing i often lack there's often a lack of a cohesive plan we have too few gifted leaders and managers where i see a lot of very technically adept and clever technical people who are put in a position of being a manager and that 
also is an issue um, that they're sometimes out of the depth, not from a technical perspective, but from a business point perspective to see the reasons why they're doing certain things. And definitely these characteristics directly affect the outcome of a successful move uh, to cloud services. So we ought to make sure that we have the right team or teams in place with a clear goal, defined and measurable objectives. Let's see a clear goal of where we're going, um, which I don't often see. One thing that often happens in the lack of teamwork is that IT take it on board. Oh, excuse me, we cancel that. I do apologize. Um, we must engage with the various business teams, um, get the IT, the security, the legal, the procurement, the risk stroke compliance teams on board together. So one of the things I often see and the complaint I receive quite often is that IT teams are too slow in providing services to the business. That's often not the IT team's fault, it's just there's too much requirements, technology moves too fast, as I mentioned earlier. So on one occasion, I know that I had someone knock on my door uh, from the head of sales and marketing to say that uh, they've been breached and uh, their client base had been stolen. So when I checked with the IT team, they hadn't a clue about what the sales and marketing people were talking about because that sales and marketing team had gone outside the organization got themselves a cloud service and we're using that fully without the knowledge of any of the IT. And the only time anybody was aware was then the breach occurred and they lost data. Um, so I'm, I'm worried that the business don't understand what IT team can do and maybe IT team haven't really explained their limitations. So, so that's, that's a true story and uh, it was resolved, we think, fairly successfully. Uh, of course, today would get you significant financial fines if something happened. One of the things that I, I'm really worried about is that without the joined up thinking, then there's a, there's a lack of accountability, responsibility and ownership. So the business doesn't really know who owns it. IT team on site say, well, actually, we don't quite own it because you do, and it's your service, and it's based in the cloud. We just facilitate. Again, it's about that teamwork. Um, IT team have said, well, it's not our problem. Uh, they've just chucked it over the wall, for example, to the, to the, over the cloud wall, and then, then they're back busy sorting out tickets with the on-site, uh, on-premise activities, and they cannot support what the business want because they haven't really discussed it. So there's definitely a mismatch between the business uh, continuity, for example, and the IT service operation. If IT team don't have a full grasp of where the data is, who has that data, then there's, there's a really big issue bubbling away here. Um, and I just recall a quick conversation I had in, in my early years, um, actually in, the, in, the, in a financial organization where and there was a, um, not specifically a cloud uh, issue, but there was a, um, a malware attack that, that affected this global organization, and certainly in the UK. And there was a big fight over which services to bring back online first. And this, this sort of aligns to the cloud as well. And eventually we got the business units and told them that if they wanted critical services, then we would, uh, they would cost them over 2,000 pounds for each critical server. So this was many years ago. And when I asked them to pay up, they all decided, oh, actually, my data isn't that critical. So from an IT team perspective, then you should only be putting the sort of the business continuity management or plan, the disaster recovery, stroke in, in, uh, into management type work um, and effort towards those, that are those critical data units. But again, it, it's again a mismatch, and, and that's what I find in many organizations I've, uh, I've had the privilege to serve with, is that there is a mismatch between what business thinks IT does and what IT think the business should do and the, and the ownership and responsibility of data. In my mind, IT team are merely the custodians of the data that provide that data to the business owner 
when they want it, where they want it. And I think that's still alive today, that quandary. But IT need to push back and say, we don't own the data. We just manage it according to the rules. Um, and, and another organization I worked for, um, I was unhappy with the, where the data was being held. And I did a, just a quick two or three day investigation. And I found that their departments and individuals um, were storing their data in the cloud, whether it was Dropbox, uh, Google, um, Microsoft, uh, Box, and others. Actually, IT didn't even know about it. And yet this information was very sensitive about individuals. So it's this, this concept that if we check it over the wall to the cloud, then someone else takes care of it. And, and that is a big problem. Um, so as we know today, that would store up quite horrendous GDPR and uh, other data protection uh, worries. Uh, and of course, the sanctions uh, are quite significant for those who are found to be negligent. Um, and, and one of the things I've, I've seen when I've done some assessments of uh, data handling in an organization is that when I say, well, can I just see the records where you've tested that the data you're saving into the cloud um, has ever been checked for its integrity? Has it ever been uh, checked for, for good download back to the on-premise for use or even available as, a, and as an alternative? And in almost, not all, but in almost all circumstances, there's been a complete failure to check the integrity of the data. Um, and they have rarely tested recovery of information and a check. And considering this could be client data, then that's a little bit worrying. So if we move on to the key the slave slide plan, sorry. Um, if you can keep, yeah, theme that one. So we often hear that there are large cloud providers out there, there are probably four or five main ones, and their services fail all the time. So then there's a fight between the business unit and the IT about, well, actually, hang on a second, I want my data back. And IT say, well, actually, we don't have it, it's in the cloud. And it's poor old IT team that normally get the blame. But if these things were run, the, the movements, uh, or the transitions from on-premise to cloud to run correctly, then that should not occur. Um, so what I found in, a, in, a, in the last five years, a, a, an organization were moving Office 365, um, there was complete chaos because the IT team themselves, whilst they were well-meaning and they were passionate about getting things sorted, they didn't have the experience to do that. Um, and one of the issues I have is that they always seem to have no plan, so no documentation, and therefore no hope of a sort of a graceful transition from A to B, or a transition of, of in this circumstance, creating an Office 365 infrastructure. And there was so much time wasted because there was no plan, and the people somehow felt that they themselves would be viewed as in incompetent because they didn't know all the answers. So um, there was limited comms internally within the IT and there was certainly limited comms within the organization itself. And there was no alignment between the teams or any suite elements. So having exchange and having, um, what shall I say, uh, teams themselves working in the same way, that did not occur. And I, I found that um, in, in all my teams, I've said, look, I always say that asking questions or help for help is definitely a sign of strength. If you don't know, ask someone, because there's always someone you know, much, much more technically advanced than I. So from my perspective, my normal go-to guy is Vladimir because he's very technical and he can help me through that. And I, and I don't feel any less because I've asked the question, but other people internally in IT teams do. And, and 
the consequence they therefore is that they don't do that they then transition out of on premise to the cloud and it's going to all end up in tears before bedtime because they haven't done it properly and they've just taken some of the key elements that they thought they knew and they're really sometimes a small fish in a small pond and when they get out into the big wide world of, of it and digital technology and digital transformation and cloud computing they're out of their depth and they don't want to say so so it, it goes back to my saying about there needs to be teamwork and there definitely needs to be accountability and responsibility not an assumption that when you go to a cloud provider that they will automatically have everything as a an out of the box um okay Vlad, i think i'm about done there so in summary then i think if you don't have a clear view of what you want to do the goal you want to go for and the objectives within then that's difficult i would definitely uh for those who are sort of edging up i know some it i'm not too sure about cloud and i know a lot about it but maybe not enough just go and engage with the uh, the it and the security folk um, who have a lot of cloud experience and engage with those cloud experts and and getting it right first time is, is definitely the way to go there's definitely got to be teamwork between the internal organization if that isn't the case then there's going to be a mismatch with normal standard IT services. There's going to be a mismatch of where data is and therefore compliance and regulatory requirements and obligations. Uh, and a mismatch between if something happens, who invokes the incident management or the disaster recovery, et cetera, et cetera. I see too many people cutting corners. And therefore, if you can get a plan together, agree the accountability, agree who owns what and, and what actions they need to take then there's definitely in it definitely a, a way forward there and I, and I always say to people if you aren't sure just ask someone i mean i'm sure there are plenty of people within csa who would gladly help to give the odd advice that having to send out a uh, you know an invoice for for some information uh, okay next slide so you know even though I made some comments there about the IT team and other people making mistakes, I think I want to just outline some of the issues that I've come across. I'm not blaming anybody specifically here. I'm just saying it's a team game and we don't do that. I am definitely a technologist. My wife can attest to that the amount of money I spend on, on gadgets and, and uh, definitely more use of the cloud. Um, going back to what uh, William Henry Davis has said, look, we, we don't just want to stand and stare about the technology that's there. We want to engage with it, but do it in a way that just says, let's do it properly. And let's just do it once. And then we'll just run and maintain it. Isn't it? it isn't a fire and forget thing to do. So yeah, let's build it by secure by design and, and right first time. Uh, and there's a, as the, the graphic there says, you know, you, you can't just kiss an IT frog and expect him her to turn into a, or him to turn into a, a prince. So uh, yeah, that's what people think happens to IT when it goes to the cloud. Uh, I think the last slide's there. Um, yeah, it's time for me to to wrap up now. Um, and maybe some time for questions, Vlad. If yes, that would that would be good. Uh, we don't seem to have questions from the audience, uh, but of course I've prepared at least one. Uh, Bob, this was a really really engaging session. Uh, the key question, uh, and it's a cheeky question, what would you say to yourself, you know, to younger yourself, you know, uh, not to make the same mistakes again, and specifically, in, you know, potentially in cybersecurity, you know? Uh, I mean, everybody has somewhere. But it's a good advice for the newcomers into the cybersecurity and cloud computing, um, what to avoid. Um, I think I would definitely be more enthusiastic I'm, I'm not an enthusiastic person anyway um but i would definitely in my younger years i probably wouldn't have asked some as many questions as i do now and therefore i recognize my limitations that's definitely to say to someone look you're more technical than i can you give me some advice most people are really glad to help you but we're really often afraid to ask questions for looking small in someone's eyes and 
I think I would ro I would love to got over that maybe when I was younger, um, and then taking advice and guidance, and then use whatever other experience I have to create a, a better plan for sure. And, and I'm I'm definitely now more of a planner than I was in the past. Although the military teaches you to plan, um, but it does teach you that often the plans fall apart at first contact with the enemy is what they say. So you have to be able to make a decision. And I definitely would say to people, you can only make a decision with the information you've got now, but you can change things if you then subsequently learn that some of the information you had wasn't uh, explicit enough or wasn't correct. Then I would take that as being able to recover quickly and be confident doing so. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay.